So talking about calcaneal malunion. Why? Most surgeons do not operate on fracture calcaneus because of either unfamiliarity with the techniques or with fear of complications. And so we have epidemic of calcaneal malunions. And what are the problems? There could be post-traumatic arthritis of subtalar joint that we all know. But there could also be post-traumatic arthritis of calcaneocuboid joint. There would be loss of calcaneal height leading to anterior ankle impingement and restriction of ankle dorsiflexion. The other important problems which could be there with calcaneal malunion could be soft tissue impingement because it has got a delicate soft tissue envelope. On the lateral side, a malunited fracture could give rise to pressure over peroneae and calcaneofibular ligament. On the plantar side, it could give pressure to plantar fat pad and there could be walking issues. And then on medial side, the medial blast of this calcaneal fracture could give rise to FHL tendinitis or sometimes pressure or posterior tibial nerve and secondary tarsal tunnel syndrome. Look at this patient with malunited calcaneus and this is how the lateral bulge looks like. If you see the axial view, there, there could be pressure by this bump onto the tendon of uh, flexor hallucis longus, there could be pressure over tibialis posterior nerve and this blast is going to press over lateral aspect on peroneal tendon. This is how varus malunion would be. There could be distortion of angles and there could be secondary flat arch mostly with the hill varus but sometimes hill could even be into valgus like in this case. The another important problem is that if you have a plantar bony prominence like this malunited calcaneal fracture like this patient would have gait problem and hill fat pain, pain problem. Sometimes this posterior bony prominence would give posterior heel pain and tendoachylis tendinosis and alteration of the gait. Shorten and broaden heel with low lying malleoli would make standard shoe feet very very difficult. And sometimes patient could have unrecognized compartment syndrome and this clot or deformities. And sometimes reflex sympathetic dystrophy. So these are the prob gametes of problem which you could find patients presenting with. Typically we classify this malunion as per Stephen and Sander. A CT based classification is used and there are three types. Type 1 where patient has got a large lateral wall exostosis with far or lateral or minimal subtalar joint arthrosis. And the traditional treatment advice as per this classification is simple excision of this bony bump, exosectomy and tenolysis of the peroneal tendon. The type 2 malunion where there is a lateral wall exostosis plus there is subtalar arthritis involving most of the or the entire joint and the treatment here is over and above exosectomy you do arthrodesis of subtalar joint. And the type 3 malunion over and above that which is found in type 1 and 2 you could have malalignment of calcaneal body into varus or into valgus and in these cases over and above fusion and lateral wall exosectomy you are obliged to do calcaneal osteotomy to correct the body malalignment that is the example of type 3. But this classification has got lot of shortcomings it does not cover tongue type and extra articular malunions. This classification does not talk about nerve and tendon impingement, protrusions and secondary deformities are not addressed. And that is why we need to have our own analysis of a patient of calcaneal malunion and we need to analyze it from where patient is having pain and we need to address every pain generators in calcaneal malunion. So that is what is my hypothesis, that is what is my method that I wish to treat every calcaneal malunion like I am going to treat a spine case. I want to identify 
every pain generator and then I want to fire treatment to every pain generator to become successful. Look at this, this sort of a malunion calcaneo cuboid arthritis or a plantar bump is not covered in this classification. So how are you going to approach this case? In history, the most common complaint is difficult ambulation more so on uneven ground. You look at the sites of the pain which will also tell you about the problems. There could be various pain sites. You, it pain could be from tendo Achilles pressure, it could be from subtalar joint, it could be from fat pad, it could be from CC joint, it could be from the ankle joint. And pain could be from peroneal calcaneofibrillar ligament, sural nerve, it could be from uh, uh, FHL and tibialis posterior nerve. You need to evaluate that. You also need to examine for swelling, tenderness, bumps, scars, incisions, deformity, arches of the foot, tendons, ligaments, nerve, adjoining joints. You need to examine for the gait, footwear and opposite limb. And after this, don't forget to look for the symptoms of the Hild compartment syndrome because patient might have cloto and cavus which also needs to be addressed. You need to rule out reflex sympathetic dystrophy. You evaluate radiologically with foot and ankle series x-rays, weight bearing views, comparative x-rays, previous x-rays and measure these angles, width of the hill, height of the hill, look at the bony prominences, location of the prominences, position of the joints, arthritis into the joint, quality of the bone, arches and deformities. After doing this thorough analysis, you might even need to go to certain other investigations. But what do you look into the x-ray? There is a decrease into the bowler's angle, the osteophyte anteriorly, you would have a varus malunion, you have large lateral wall exostosis. CT scan is another important modality which tells you about the arthritis of the subtalar joint, impingement of the peroneal, dislocation of the peroneal tendon and you obviously classify this malunion based on to CT scan. But this is what forms the mainstay of my diagnostic algorithm in my practice. I use lot of differential injections around joints, nerves and tendons to identify the pain generators like we do for a spine case. So as I said, evaluation is aimed to identify the pain generators and your approach is same as that for the spine. So once you label down that these are the pain generators you will have to address your treatment to every pain generator and then only you would be successful. So what are the management options you have? You could get out with doing only exosectomy. This is how you do it and you make sure that your exosectom, uh, uh, you are removing the bump and making calcaneum parallel, parallel to the articular to the talus. You could go in for the arthrodesis of subtalar joint. Sometimes you need to do arthrodesis plus osteotomy and correction osteotomy plus arthrodesis and sometimes you could go in for distraction arthrodesis to raise the heel height. Now this is how, these are the cases where a subtalar fusion was done post calcaneal malunion. You could use tricortical bone graft, you could use three screws and these are the various cases. Sometimes you also need to do post fixation arthrodesis like in this case. What is important that malunion should never be fused without correcting deformity. Arthrodesis is always with correction of deformity. Your aim is to give plantigrade foot. You might need iliac crest bone grafting. Look at this malunion and this is the axis and it was corrected like this. Romes described a method where he goes for correction through the old fracture, he makes the osteotomy, he distracts and does the arthrodesis. I don't have any experience of doing this. For tendon impingement, you will have to do tenolysis, tenosynovectomy and bony decompression. For the nerve problems, you need to do decompression, neurolysis, sometimes neurectomy. But plantigrade foot and relief of the pressure are the aim to become successful. Most important is you must explain your patient of calcaneal malunion about the expected end result. I end my talk with demonstrating my worst case of calcaneal malunion where I ended up doing 15, 14 surgical procedures. Look at this case, look at the lateral view, 
he had on medial side FHL impingement and lateral side he had a peroneal impingement on plantar side he had a painful plantar bump he had a sural as well as tibial posterior tibial now neuralgic pain he had a forefoot abduction on weight bearing he had hind foot valgus instead of varus with secondary flat arch he had arthritis of subtalar as well as calcaneo cuboid joint he had a tendo achilles tightness and then i did 14 procedure peroneal tenolysis with excision of the lateral bump plantar bump excision medial bump excision tarsal tunnel release subtalar fusion destruction calcaneo cuboid fusion MCO medializing calcaneal osteotomy for heel valgus correction, iliac crest bone grafting, calcaneo cuboid destruction arthrodesis, percutaneous triple hemi resection, tendo achilles release, and all four lateral clot or release. So, friends, I again repeat try to correct as much damage as possible in acute phase with surgery because late salvage procedures are quite difficult with absolutely uncertain results. That's all. Thank you very much.